the manufacturer. If we are to get our vaccines at a certain temperature, like for instance, the, the current vaccines we have, have to have a temperature of between two to eight degrees Celsius. So from Beijing, from the, you know, from the factory, they were loaded onto the plane at that temperature and they had to fly all the way to Harare at that temperature, offloaded and sent to our uh, national, uh, you, know, uh, you know, to Nat Farm, our national pharmaceutical um, you know, you know, you know, holding company at that same temperature. And today when we introduced the vaccination, it was at that same temperature. Because if anything goes wrong, then either the vaccine is rendered useless and it is thrown away. And so that is the cold chain we are talking about. Six, to monitor progress, adverse events following immunization, AEFIs and provide corrective action. This, when somebody has been given the vaccine, it's not everyone who is going to, who is going to react to the same. In here, honorable members, we can be given stop and tablet because we are having a headache, feeling a headache. But some will react to it. And some, you know, will quickly, their headache will quickly go away. And this is what we are talking about, the AEFIs. What, after the immunization, what reaction? Are they any adverse? In other words, uh, are there any reactions or has somebody reacted to the vaccine? So these are what we want to take care of, and this has been part of the training which has been going on and which has always been within the ministry. And lastly, create demand for immunization. Coming to the regulatory framework, The COVID-19 vaccine is an emergent vaccine registered by the Medicine Control Authority of Zimbabwe, MCAS, under Emergency Use Authority. This is in terms of Section 75 of the Medicines and Allied Substance Control Act, Chapter 1503. And so the COVID-19, so the registration which we, had, which we have done on all the vaccines which have been looked at by our scientists, our professionals, and our experts, we have registered them under this emergence, you know, use, you know, for, for you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, emergence, Useful, you know, just to authorize for the emergency use. And we have done not only Sinopharm, but we have done Sinovac, we have done Sputnik Victory, which is uh, normally, uh, you know, spelled as uh, v, you know, Sputnik V. And we are also doing other vaccines from other countries. But the procedure will be done by the Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe, who are our experts, who will deal with this thing. That's where we have got our scientists who, who are trained to do um, this kind of job. The, pharmaco, the pharmacovigilance and clinical trials committee will implement vaccine vigilance plans 
to monitor the safety and effectiveness of the COVID-19 vaccine in use. Each vaccine consignment shall be physically verified and cleared by the Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe upon arrival. In this last consignment, the Deputy Minister of Health and Child Care had to lead the delegation and the head of the Zimbabwe, the, of um, the Medicine Control Authority of Zimbabwe, was also part of the delegation and the Minister of Finance. And so he had to come with the consignment and make sure that all procedures are being followed. Each consignment shall be cleared on the basis of the standard vaccine lot release documentation. Madam President, let me come now to the regulatory framework. My ministry will set up and implement the safety monitoring plan to enable swift detection of any adverse events following immunization or AEFIs. My ministry will consider a start to conform immunogenicity of the product in the local population. Coming to the planning and coordination, training of provinces and districts, train of trainers has already been conducted. This program has been completed successfully. Training of the vaccinators will be conducted on 20th to 21st February 2021. Vaccination will be rolled out throughout the country on Monday, 22nd of February. Madam President, coming to the resources and funding, Treasury has raised the United States dollars at 100 million for purchase of COVID vaccines. We want to safeguard all our citizens. Life cannot be bought, and it is the right of each Zimbabwean to survive. Corporate partners requested to meet with His Excellency the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Comrade Emerson Damzom on 26 January 2021, and pledged to assist in fundraising through government. I'm sorry, to, um, to, to assist in, uh, in fund raising, though government will decide with which vaccines to be purchased. That meeting was successfully done, Madam President, on the 26th, and as I speak, the account has been opened and we are receiving a lot of donation from corporate partners. These are Zimbabweans. The estimated overall operational budget, excluding purchase of vaccines for COVID-19 vaccination, is six million seven hundred seventy-eight, seven hundred seventy-seven. And the budget summary, this is for phase one. And the, budget, and the budget summary for phase one and stage one for all stages is indicated in the table below. I, I hope the, 
Madam uh, President, the, uh, um, the, the briefs which I'm giving, I, I um, said that they, they should produce uh, many copies for honorable senators so that each one, each of the senators will have the copies. Um, so you can follow the program as we go on. Mm -hmm. So it is separated from training right up to waste management. And the target populations for vaccinations, phase one, stage one, and two, we are looking at 3,662,000 thousand two hundred and seventy nine people this will constitute twenty two percent of our population phase two we are looking at three with three million and fifty thousand eight hundred and fifty five and this will be eighteen point four percent of our people Phase three, we are looking at three million again and fifty thousand eight hundred and fifty five. Again, this will constitute eighteen point four percent. The subtotal will amount to nine million seven hundred and sixty three nine hundred and eighty eight. And this will constitute 58.8% uh, of our total population. The total population under 16 years is 6,795,000, which is 41.2%. And the total population of our, our people, to make 100%, we estimate 16,558,987,000. Madam President, the figures I have given here are estimates, but as you are aware, the census will be done next year where we are going to get the actual figures. But these are estimate figures which we are using as Minister of Health. Target population for phase one, stage one. Here we are talking that target population which we said we want to first um, immunize or give the vaccine. Minister of Health, which is the the health and trans, the, uh, the health sector, we are combining. We are looking at forty nine thousand, which will require to be vaccinated. The security forces. We are looking at the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, Zimbabwe Republic Police, the Zimbabwe Prison Services and Correctional Services in um, Zimbabwe Prison and Correctional Services. They have got their figures, but we are not um, looking at the um, the totality of um, like if we look at uh, the Zimbabwe Republic Police, there are fifty two. Uh, uh, 50,000, but we will be looking at 500 plus of their health workers. Mm. They are the ones to get the first priority. For the Defense Forces, we are looking at 3,000 plus. And for the prison services, we are looking at 700 plus. On top of that, we have Zimra, Immigration and agriculture. We want V 
this to be in the phase one, stage one. There are other small groups who will be uh, in this, but in the main, these are the, the, you know, the people we are, or the, the, the category of people we are looking in phase one uh, and, and stage one to be vaccinated. Target groups for vaccinations, phase one, cooperation at high risk, stage one. Those are the frontline workers which I've talked about, mm. like the health workers, ports of entry personnel, Zimra, immigration, uh, you know, um, the security, uh, you, know, you know, services, the funeral parlors and others, and agri-tech. Agri These are, they are, you know, the, in the stage one. Stage two, we are looking at, this is phase one, still, we are looking in, we have broken them down into phase one, into stage one and stage two. Stage two, we are looking at chronic illness. Chronic illnesses, we are looking at like diabetic patients. Those with ailments, with, um, you, know, um, uh, you know, you call them underlining what? Diseases. Underlining conditions. It might be diabetes, it might be cancer, it might be, uh, you know, HIV. It might be those people who have had multiple operations. We wanted to save them because they are, they, they are uh, people at, you know, in, the, in, in a risk category. Elder population, 60 and above. And so, <coughs> I hope majority of uh, honorable <laughs> members here will be eligible. <laughs> <laughs> Inmates, prison populations, we are looking at our prisoners. Those in the prisons, it does not necessarily mean that when a person is gone for correctional services, he has been sentenced to death. We still, he is still a good citizen. We want him after being corrected the wrongs he or she might have done to come back. And so we want to have their lives saved. And others in confined settlements, including refugee camps. We've got a few refugee camps in the country. And those people, because they are living in concentrated areas. I've given an example of refugee camps here, but we are saying confined settlements. We have got also confined settlements in our urban areas where, you know, we have got people in, um, you know, living in squared conditions, uh, in, in too, too many people in a, in a very small area. Those are the areas we will be looking at because we don't want them to be affected by this disease. Phase two. Lecturers, all school staff population, and, and other staff in, at medium risk, depending with the epidemiological picture of the disease. So we'll be looking at how this disease will be ravaging our population, and then we can include certain uh, groups which we might have left uh, or which we might think must go in phase two. Phase three is the rest of the country that is the population at low risk. Training, Madam President, We are looking at the development and adaptation of training materials for all activities. 
Two, the ministry has trained trainers of uh, uh, has, has trained trainers of, tra uh, of, of trainers for provincial and district trainers, which I have already mentioned before. Provincial and district trainers will in turn train health workers at service delivery uh, centers. Expanded program of immunization, EPI, supported by, uh, support, uh, supported by the planning and conduct of the top of the TOTS, that is train, uh, train, uh, uh, training of the trainers, online in person, and blended learning, that is combination of online and in person, are the most common methods which will be used to train staff. And lastly, areas of training to include vaccine storage, communication, surveillance, vaccination and monitoring, and evaluation, M&E, and management of AEFI and waste management. As you are aware, when we talk of waste management, we are talking of the real virus. Because as people are given those jobs, there might be a virus, and that waste must be well managed, lest we cause problems to the generality of our people. Vaccination service delivery. The actual administration of the vaccine will be done at fixed outreach points. One to two outreach teams will be allocated per rural district. Depending on the size of the district, with five people per team. So if the district is small, a team of five people can go around to do the vaccination. Harare City, as an example, will be allocated 11 teams. Flawayo, four teams. And Shunguiza, two teams. Vaccination teams will require fuel, lunch, and daily subsistence allowance. That's why we talked about that operational budget. The assumption is vaccination will be conducted over 10 days in the first round and five days in the second round. And you ask why we said five, 10 days in the first round? Because our people are still learning the trade, the ropes, they have some maybe have not even you know done this exercise. I was checking with my staff to say who were involved in the polio, and I looked around, there was none because none of them was in the profession by then. So the that experience has to be gained. But as we go into the next stage our people will then get and so the number of days uh, you know per each um, you know you know stage or per each phase will continue to be reduced supervisors drawn from head office province and districts will monitor planning implementation and outcomes Madam President, we come to the supply chain management. The immunization 
supply chain of Zimbabwe consists of four levels, which are central, provincial, district, and service delivery. Vaccine distribution follows this channel from the central vaccine to 10 provincial and 63 district vaccine stores and then to more than 1,800 delivery facilities. We are now talking the world level after the district. The central vaccine stores distribute vaccines to provincial vaccine stores. Provinces distribute vaccines to districts, vaccine stores, and districts to service delivery as well. Distribution of COVID-19 vaccine will follow the existing distribution structure of routine vaccines and supplies. But in this case, there will be a slight difference. Because this is a critical vaccine. The vaccine will be received at the airport, distributed to, police, to provinces and districts under police escort. Because we don't want to hear the stories that, you know, two doses cannot be accounted for or have disappeared. We want every dose that would have been deployed to go for the intended yeah, the, the person or persons. The supply chain. Madam President, distribution planning is based on target population per province. We shall ensure that adequate supply to, to potent vaccine to all eligible populations. Ensure functional cold chain equipment at all levels. This will require that we have generators at every point where the vaccines are going to be stored, lest we have breakdown from DESA. We need to have other, uh, uh, other means to keep the vaccines in, uh, in good shape. There will be police escort accompanying Zimbabwe expanded program on immunization ZEP distribution vans. So those vans which will carry the vaccines will be escorted by the police. Distributed to provinces, to, uh, sorry, to provincial cold rooms with capacity of nine square, cubic square meters I mean, cubic meters under police escort. Logistical support of, of, uh, for vaccine distribution and cold chain management throughout the period from planning to implementation. And finally, supply fuel for central level and provincial standby generators. There is the, the vaccine distribution flow chart, which uh, one of our members can see, which is also attached uh, to this, what I was talking about. We put it in a, in a, in a diagrammatic 
um, uh, in, you know, presentation. And the others are for the funds which we have now, uh, which will be used for the, for the distribution of the drugs, those who haven't got the purpose, these are the type of funds which we are talking about. And the code rooms, uh, we have also attached diagrams of the code rooms. And the cold chain capacity, we've put in, you know, um, you know the, the measurements and the liters which we are talking about. Those are well detailed and you will see them. Let me come to the information and uh, information dissemination that is advocates communication and social mobilization. Advocates meetings and activities to be conducted at all levels. And we hope honorable members will also take part in this campaign. Because it is important that our people understand the importance of getting immunized. As I said earlier on, we don't want to lose any life. National vaccination launch to be conducted virtually to rally all stakeholders for COVID-19, which we have already done. And this will continue to be done as we go to the provinces, to the districts, um, to the um, health um, you know, you know, delivery centers, we will be um, working hand in glove with the Minister of Information to make sure that um, this information is well publicized and that the people know what is happening. Social mobilization done at all levels in order to create demand for the vaccine. And for community mobilization for vaccination will be conducted via radio and TV programs and announcement. Interpersonal communication with target groups. newspaper articles and advertisements, social media campaigns, Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, but we plead with everyone that misusing these social medias for other arterial motives will not work. Because when your life is taken, then you cease to be on the social media. So we, 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 we request and we also ask honorable members that wherever you are, teach our people. There are people who write all the kind of nonsense on the social media and at the same time, You'll be the first person to go, where is the vaccination? Where is the vaccine? <laughs> Wants to get the vaccine. So we, we have already started, you know, uh, you know, you know, getting reports of some, you know, some people who will be, you know, just for the, for the fun of it, going and misusing the social media. This is not the time of misuse or playing around with the, with the lives of people. Because life cannot be, can never be bought. Bulk SMS messages can also be used. Billboards, banners, posters, 
and board media. Crisis communication that is addressing serious AF, uh, sorry, A A e F I's. These are what we, what we think in terms of information dissemination. Madam President, coming now to vaccine safety monitoring and management of AEFI and injection safety. One, in partnership with the Minister of Health and Child Care, ZEP, the National Ph Pharmacovigilance and Clinical Trials Committee, Medicine Control Authority of Zimbabwe, MCAS, are the main dri drivers of vaccine safety surveillance. Two, COVID-19 vaccine safety surveillance will be guided by already existing Minister of Health and Child Care adverse events following immunization, AEFI, surveillance guidelines, and the World Health Organization WHO COVID-19 vaccine safety surveillance manual. Safety surveillance for COVID-19 vaccine will be further strengthened through additional. First, training of national stakeholders and investigation teams. Next, Training of national AEFI, that is the adverse events following immunization committee on casual assessment of adverse events following COVID-19 vaccination. Next, training and preparation of health care workers on identification management and reporting of potential, uh, potential cases of anaphylaxis and ensuring availability of comprehensive emergency training at all vaccination points. And lastly on this, the training will be provided as part of a comprehensive COVID-19 vaccine introduction trainings. Four, instituting active surveillance of adverse events of special interest following COVID-19 vaccination. And the chart on the um, adverse events following immunization is also attached. So you can go through that um, chart. Madam President, I'm now coming to biohazard and immunization waste management. One, management of waste related to COVID-19 vaccination requires special attention due to the infection nature of the virus. Two, waste generated from COVID-19 vaccination will be according to the country's existing waste management guidelines for treatment of health waste. Three, there will be waste segregation 
at point of generation following existing protocols. And lastly, all medical waste will be in insulated either at point of generation if there is a functional insulator or at some central insulation point in which case transport will provide will be provided to move the waste to the insulation point. Monitoring and evaluation. Madam President, development of monitoring and evaluation framework, ME, to guide planning and implementation. Two, there will be pre-vaccination demographic data correction. Three, conduct preparedness assessment to assess readiness at all levels. Four, development of data correction tools, that is tally sheets, summary sheets, vaccination cards, and now we have mine. Five, consolidation and reporting of the number reached will be done on a daily basis using existing platforms and structures. Six, disease surveillance will include AEFI monitoring. Seven, there will be blood correction to determine antibodies before and after vaccination. Mine has been done. Conduct a post campaign coverage survey to validate administrative data. And lastly, conduct a post introduction evaluation to assess the quality of the introduction of COVID 19 vaccine and help inform future introductions. Lastly, Madam President, is the tentative timeline of activities. Planning will be ongoing. Training, we started on the 12th for the provincial and district, and with this, we finished on the 16th. Procurement, the donation which was first given to us by the People's Republic of China was corrected and it arrived here on the 15th. But we have already started the processing together with the Minister of Finance for the next batches to come. We are looking at the batches. The next, I think it will be 600,000 and then 1.2, and we are hoping to be getting these vaccines every two weeks, every three weeks coming so that the program which we have started continues to go and it does not stop until our people are fully vaccinated. Vaccine distribution has already started, but by the 26th, we would have completed to get to the, um, the, the, uh, the health delivery centers, which is at what level. The cold chain inventory 
is an ongoing. Advocates communication and mobilization, we started from the eight and it will continue until this uh, vaccination on COVID-19 is complete. Monitoring and evaluation again will continue <coughs> until we finish 